Hello and welcome to Daft Souls. I think it's episode number 26. And today I'm joined by Aoife Wilson. Hello. And the special guest, Mr. Pointy Head off Yay. the Xbox Live. Also known as Dan Ma. Also Hi. known as Dan Ma. So I'm just winding you up. I love back. Xbox Live. It was the it, it was the double-edged sword there. See, so yeah, I was a special, <laughs> special guest. And then took the make. Now, and of course, also from the Explosive Allen podcast, which I was on yeah. not long ago at all. It wasn't. Um, You're a very good guest. Sorry, as soon as my glasses, you've got this kind of <laughs> very <laughs> style <laughs> voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Darth Vader in a glass. Where still uh, <laughs> I really like this bar. I can't do it because my glass is full. Um, anyway, how are I like you? that you're a glasses full guy, not I, well, No, I literally am. I mean, it's, it's the, the glass is like not my a glass is nine tenths full rather than a one tenth empty kind of guy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Ever the optimist. I like to look at the optimistic side of things. And you're also a slow drinker. I, well, he I is, isn't he? All right, all right. Anyway, let's uh, let's interrupt this this bullying session. <laughs> To, uh, tell me what you've been playing, Aoife. Um, what have I been playing? Most recently, uh, GTA V, again, on PS4. Um, that arrived yesterday, I've heard it's before. got more dogs. It's got more dogs. It's got more, more grass. Food. It's got cats. So, me and Dan were filming something earlier today. I don't know if you were in the room at the time. I was. But, um, you, what, about the cat kicking? Discussing cat it? abuse. Yes, yes, cat abuse. So, this is a new feature of, uh, of GTA V on the PS4. You can kick cats. What? Right? At the very, very start, um, when Fr- Franklin and Lamar are going to boost... Oh, no, they're going to pick up that bike, aren't they? <laughs> yes. You. But if, if nothing, like, GTA V is an equal opportunities physical abuse simulator. Right, right. Well, like they didn't have already... cats. They didn't have cats on the last gen console, so this is a brand new thing. But you're walking down an alleyway and two cats run in front of you and someone told me, oh yeah, you can kick them. I was like, why would you do that? I saw them run. I was like, oh, I'm kidding. And I tried to chase it, but I didn't kick it. So I guess, I mean, I shouldn't be like shocked in a game in which you can like kick everything else. Really. Right, exactly. I don't know why I was so I shocked. I did like the way that you've obviously been getting back into the gang speak that you said, oh, we're trying to boost the car. It's, like, <laughs> it's called stealing, Eva. <laughs> no, we're boosting. In cars, yo. Who would call it a robbery? <laughs> Listen, theft, I was I, I was brought up in the mean streets of Northern Ireland. Okay, right. I will I will I will cut a bitch. So <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, because wow. so, the thing is, I didn't get that far with the campaign, but I did enjoy it. I think I, I I know how far I got because I just sort of got to the bit with Michael where you have the kind of crazy trippy mm. dream. Oh, okay. So oh, when you, you take the toke from the you, crazy bifter and he becomes no, yeah. no, that bit was kind of all right. I thought I was a, I thought that was the a bit weak actually. Bit. The aliens bit. There's a couple of those because oh, yes. it was the bit so, where your your son like spikes your drink. Or right. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things about this uh, about the new version is now you can turn into animals. You can. You find peyote, don't you? Yeah. Which you is can, pretty you can, cool. Yeah, you have an out of body experience in chicken in body experience seagull <laughs> seagull or cougar or a coyote which is pretty Maybe I think that's, with your I spirit just I think that's awesome game. where you do that I'm very interested I mean this is totally off topic now but I've just read about this non-combat based MMO that's coming out it's really? also coming to PS4 and you basically do occupy the bodies of different animals you I can be love you that. can be a tree well why would you be a and tree and it's just though? exploring a world but why it's like a tree, a tree with a face. <laughs> a bit like an ant. Tree what? A bit like right, an ant. Okay, so a bit like an ant. But what's that, it called? I think it's called like Warder or something like that. I feel really terrible because I can't remember the name of it. But I saw it yesterday. Oh, time maybe? No, no, that's something else. It's just some like Wonder or Warder. Maybe it's Wonder. Maybe it's Wonder. And the whole idea is it's a non-combat based MMO. You just wander around. You just wander around I love this beautiful that. world, waterfalls, and just witnessing nature's beauty. I get the impression that like a Arcage griffin. is a bit like more like that. Somebody because I've got some friends who are playing that and they were like. Yeah, I'm like farming carrots and like building my <laughs> hut up, and I was sort of like, I really want to play that. I yeah. suddenly just got flashbacks of Harvest Moon, and oh man, mm, that's like, such an addictive know, game. I tend to, it's one of those weird games we don't talk about all the time on here. But anyway, um, <laughs> where were we? GTA Five. Hey, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. cats. Yeah, I, no. I feel bad because I've done the stupid thing that I knew. I bought it full price, played it for about six, seven hours, and now it's out on PS4. Mm. I kind of think, well. You didn't play it that much, so maybe you could get it on PS4. But it's I've, like- I've bought it for I bought it for Xbox 360, and I bought it for PS4 again. I I love I finished the campaign, and um, like uh, honestly, some of my favorite moments of like last year, w- gaming wise, was was playing like the the GTA Online with, with a bunch of people and just like just wandering around, just doing stupid stuff. I just love that world so much. I mean, I can I can leave the the story of GTA yeah. like it's that's problematic at, at best, but like. Just the world, it's so fucking good. My friends are imploring me to go back to GTA Online yeah. specifically. They're yeah. posting constantly on WhatsApp pictures of it's so worth here's it. here's us having a selfie You're together. Right. I and just love that though. Talk, there's, there's literal talk of like jizzing each other in each other's face. I don't know if that's, that's the that oh, is the it's gesture. An that's, I was yeah, like, yeah. I can you literally do that. No, you, <laughs> are we you doing can, this after you, we play the game? Yeah, just mime so it. Yeah, so. 
I'm, and I'm kind of tempted, but it's the peer pressure thing. I don't, I'm like you, I kind of played <laughs> through campaign to a certain mm. extent and I was a bit like, okay, I've kind of seen it. And GTA Online had its moments, but mm. I don't know, I've just but never see, fully got on board with the so, Rockstar See, this is the thing. thing. So Simon Parkin wrote a great thing today. It was on Eurogamer and it was uh, like... Of retrospect. course he did. I, right? Well, what else does he write? <laughs> what else does he fucking do? The talented <laughs> Here's, a sentence, know, what here's a sentence that never happened. Simon Parkin <laughs> wrote some bullshit. <laughs> But um, so it was. It was about Fuck like you Simon Parkin, <laughs> Simon Parkin, you brilliant, talented brilliant man. bastard. <laughs> but it was basically uh, Grand Theft Auto one year on, and it was like it was just saying that um, San Andreas as a city is is a mirror on you, the player. You can you get out of it what you put in, and I think yeah. that's true totally because like so everyone thinks of GTA as like this ultra violent you know game where you go and shoot people up and you go to a strip club and you do whatever. My lasting memories of that game, like last night, right? For example, I spent twenty minutes taking like really arty photographs of people on the street and like putting filters I don't fucking I don't even own Instagram <laughs> in real life like but I was just like completely engrossed with like ooh this is like me this is my escapism like just how long into it. that did you have a, a sort of moment where you just go what am I doing uh, about yeah about five minutes but then I kept doing it I was just like this is really I thought because yeah, 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 yeah. in the new one on. you can give your character expressions right yeah and you yeah, can set yeah. Instagram style filters you can also you can change the depth of field, field right yeah. yeah I thought that was amazing I was just like this is if there's one thing that one thing that's happened with next gen it's it's I think it started with like The Last of Us Remastered and now every game Shadow of Mordor added it in Picture Mode Picture mm -hmm. Mode because people have realised that even Nintendo had it with uh, with Wind Waker right which is like Wind Waker well Smash Brothers mm -hmm. it's that whole it's time free marketing isn't it it's oh, yeah, free marketing Mario Kart and it's replay. beautiful and with like Im Imgur Imgur whatever you call it Imgur it's, I'm pretty it's, sure it's pronounced Imgur I'm just saying Imgur Imgur <laughs> like Japan um, <laughs> so it's just this thing where it's got to this point where the visuals in games are so beautiful, and this is always my issue with 3D films as well. You don't get enough time to appreciate a scene because it's constantly moving, and there's so much time and effort that's gone into developing these, and and the the amount of artistry that's gone mm. into making these beautiful scenes and beautiful bits of design, but it's all moving along at such a fast pace. Nobody you never get stops. time to sit Nobody back, stops. stop, and yeah. just appreciate it. Uh, and these photography modes are finally making people realise: God, if I sit back and just take a Gorgeous, second to reflect. Yeah. So many of these games are just absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, Smash Brothers had it because the character design was fantastic. You got all these crazy expressions, and you could set up all these poses and stuff. But we've got to this point now um, with things like Elite Dangerous, and mm. and you know, being able to crank up the resolution mm. on PC games to 4K beyond, even if it's just for the sake of taking that shot, because the game's going to be running at yeah. 12 frames a second as you're trying to do it. But just being able to just capture that one moment, like Andy Kelly's very good at it. He did it recently. He did a whole gallery of Shadow of Mordor shots. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously he does it with other places. With other sure places yeah. He makes you appreciate environments, but now he's doing it with, with the static form. And that's something I think is brilliant. I can't remember who it was. It might be the New York Times or somebody got a, uh, a photographer to go into The Last of Us. Yeah, and it was shit. It, yes, was and it was surprisingly <laughs> shit, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it was really shit. Yeah, um, because they just basically, didn't know how to manipulate. Well, they it. didn't really care about it. I think like it was no. one of those things where the photo they they sent a war photographer to photograph um, screenshots in the, yes. the last of us, mm. and basically what you got was a bunch of half-assed screen grabs mm. with a rather haughty torty thing about going oh this isn't very good is it yeah which really? went, which went to prove that it's like it's a separate art in itself it's like yeah. you can go and photograph real things but if you don't have the appreciation appreciation of, of games medium, and the appreciation yeah. of the medium and that mm. then you still can't kind of convey what's brilliant I'd about it I'd still like it. to see that again though but with a different brief because the brief was bad I think I could see what they were trying to do with that and they were basically going for a headline rather than the actual product. Yeah, someone who's not talking about telling someone else who didn't Well, read they that. wanted to go for the human angle. In fact, they got a war photographer into this like post-apocalyptic thing. It's yeah. a nice idea. But the thing is, basically, then you just got this critique of them being like, well, the way these characters are behaving in these situations isn't realistic. Like, they would be like... They'd look different. <laughs> They'd be behaving differently. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, of course. But right. then I'd, I'd love to see if they got like some famous like landscape photographers yeah. and put them in and saw what they could do. Yeah. Because yeah. that would be something that would be like... But then having said that, like I don't know if we need that. Because, I mean, you've got Dead End Thrills doing fantastic work for years and years of yep. taking mm. incredible screenshots. So much now that actually I think quite a few companies now just use him for their screenshots. <laughs> because it's like, hang on a minute, this guy does the best ones. So let's they get let's him get to him, do it. Yeah. Um, and obviously, yeah, Andy Kelly's other places of the country. I don't think there's anything to be said against that as well. Is that there's, you, you would hire a professional photographer to go out and cover your event. Why won't you hire a professional yeah. in-game photographer right. to get the most out of your games? Because we have, for years, suffered 
Bullshots. In our respective ju- bullshots mm-hmm. in our journalistic roles, people who've just someone in PR has just gone screen grab, screen grab, screen grab some preview code mm-hmm. and just oh God, completely yeah. failed to convey what the game's about. I just yeah. remember having to do the fucking captions for them. I'm sure you, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's like, so hard. Like, here's five screenshots of a game that are basically like slightly different angles of the same three men with guns. It's like, yeah. and you need captions for all of them. And there's absolutely nothing <laughs> like, to latch on yeah, to. Often it's there's like, like, not you don't even have any information about the game. No. It's just like, oh, you end up going for like the really awful joke. Yeah, it's either like it's... shit jokes or pure madness. Yeah. I often found that like uh, oh yeah, pure madness postmodernism. Like yeah. the, the the realization of what you're looking at yeah. is, isn't worthy of a caption and making a caption that <laughs> just conveys going, that. Just going insane in the captions was great fun because ca- people don't really check the captions very much when they're subbing when they're it and re- stuff. Yeah, no. So you get away. With, <laughs> <laughs> you get away with just writing some really weird stuff like yeah, I'm not like you know dark or just just like stuff that doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, I'm sure I've written captions about what I was doing at the time of writing the caption rather than like I'm just having a cup of tea and this is my life and I really need to go for a wee now that's the sub approved yeah sorry about that Chanty. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine nobody cares anymore he's moved on now literally <laughs> nobody cares anymore um, <laughs> so what have you been playing recently Dan? Um, well I'm trying to I'm trying to well I don't want to say it really, but I have been playing a lot of Call of Duty. Oh, I thought you were going to say something like really yeah. bad. No, but it's, it's I suppose yeah, it's obviously. kind of unpopular, and part of it is because I've spent the last six months of my life hosting a paid-for show, a show paid for by Activision about Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, and somehow, within that six-month span, I've successfully managed to not play Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And I don't know how I managed it. Every event I went to, Gamescom, EGX, whatever, just never got my, my hands on it. And I always make sure I always make sure with these shows that I don't kind of pass any judgment. I don't go, oh, this brilliant new announcement. I never, yeah, I never yeah. add any kind but it of. It kind of makes sense in the pre-release. If you if you are going to be doing advertorial, then you don't, don't want to also be like if you're playing it. Then I guess the temptation then will be to talk about it. Outside yeah, I mean, of that well, we always we always had we always had people on who were you know professional the YouTubers, commentators, stuff, yeah. whatever you know, and, and they had a vested interest in it. And I, in a way, because I was being paid to do this as a job, I had a vested interest in it. it you know, it would have been easy for me to go and just presume that everything was brilliant and tell everybody that everyone was brilliant. But I didn't. I didn't play, and it would have been nice at some point because I've recorded the last three episodes post launch. And it was amazing the change that occurred when I was talking to the pro gamers and the commentators. I was suddenly like joining in and going, "Oh my god, this game, this gun's amazing!" And, oh, da, da, da. Really? and I was getting really, and I, I was suddenly like flipped because I went from this kind of like, "Oh god, I can't do another episode." And, there was a lot of episodes. Oh, I've got to talk about this new trailer. And there were a lot of fucking episodes. For that yeah. Thing. yeah, there were a lot of episodes for that thing, and who had to come up with all the content? <laughs> um, yes. So, and it's really funny to think I would have thought that I would have been so Call of Duty'd out at the end of all that that I would would have just give, been given the disc and just crushed it in my hand and gone no more uh, but I didn't I sat down and I played it I was like oh, I'd lo- I, I love Call of Duty I used to love playing Modern Warfare um, didn't play a lot of World at War got into Black Ops got into Modern Warfare 3 you know those those games really appealed to me and Advanced Warfare is worthy enough of being considered a lot in the same breath as those games I think it's had its to be fair everyone is it, saying it's been the best it's had its dark moments but um I'm an arcade gamer at heart, and the thing about Call of Duty, despite the fact that a lot of people who play it are very dismissive of anything else, <laughs> like any other games ever, it's like my life. In the same way that there's a lot of FIFA players who are like, I'm going to buy a console because I can play FIFA, and yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. everything it, else yeah. you can fuck right off. Yeah. Uh, Call of Duty is the same thing, but for me, it's like, as an arcade gamer at heart, like that, that's, what, that's the way I was brought into gaming, was going to... Like Blackpool, and then going to an arcade and playing Golden Axe and things like that. For me, Call of Duty is the natural extension of that. It's just cheap thrills gaming, and it's just that constant. What was what what Edge of Tomorrow? What they call it? Live, die, repeat, whatever they call it. Oh, yeah, shoot, yeah. Repeat. I mean that that's Call of Duty in a nutshell. It's good. I mean, yeah. I actually I wrote a massive thing about Call of Duty, the latest one uh, for Vice. Mm. Um, today, well, yeah, I saw that, yeah. um, which was I don't because it's one of the things that one of my biggest bugbears with that game is that. Uh, most of the time when people write about it or review Call of Duty games they spend the entire review talking about the campaign and then just have like a paragraph at the bottom which says which is totally the wrong way around it's, <laughs> it's kind of good totally and it's like are you insane are you yeah. fucking insane like some people I know they buy them and don't even play touch the it no. they go straight and so I wanted to talk about the campaign but I also want to talk about the multiplayer and so it ended up being a massive article just because it's like I want to actually talk about both of these things yeah. rather than just like 
well, the multiplayer looks good. Yeah, and it's, it's a nonsense. <laughs> it's like people seem to think that the popularity of Call of Duty has been built on the on the campaign. Like, what you nonsense! Even... You will spend four to five hours getting through that and going, "That was all right." Basically, the campaign is, is just a tutorial for the multiplayer. I like, think it gradually, it is, though. but it, well, it used Ghosts to be. Ghosts was, I think, really, yeah. because it, it sort of it gradually introduced you to like some of the guns and some of like the thing. But then Ghosts was a bit. It of, always has been, though. You're right. It always has been mm. that they're, they're an introduction. You play through the campaign for mm. a bit and then you jump online. Mm. But this year. I'm really fascinated to know what happened, what the fuck happened with Advanced Warfare, because it's like, it doesn't make sense in that regard. Like, it doesn't, the campaign does not prepare you for the multiplayer in any regard. Really? No. No. Well, it's, it's, is that because of the verticality? Or it's because of, like, it it's basically, the, the, the quickest way to explain it is it's like they've added all of this amazing movement-based stuff, mm -hmm. which is really, really fucking good. I've got mm -hmm. to say, I, I got, went to Destiny last night, I was playing some Crucible. I still love playing Crucible and Destiny. I still love the movement and that, but mm -hmm. even despite people going, oh, yeah, sure, they've added double jump and they've added all this stuff, all, all games have got that now. I found when I was in Destiny, I was really missing a lot of the really? the ability to like click the stick in sideways to like quickly dodge, yeah. like kind of boost dodge. Mm. It's just a really good yeah. system, and it really changes the multiplayer. Funnily a enough, lot. I think that that particular movement would loan itself so well to Destiny it as would. well. It because would. Destiny is much more about Strip oh shit, I'm being hit, like, but I've got yeah, a chance yeah. to get away from this. Uh, Call of Duty is uh, is as it has always been about I'm getting shot. I'm dead. Like it's, that's pretty much it. If you get away from you it, you are lucky. React, There's nothing yeah. else. But Des Destiny gives you a chance, much as Bungie did with Halo. You know, you've got a chance. Get your, your shield's been worn down. I can boost out the way and rethink my strategy. And I really wish because yeah, I can imagine because I haven't been back to Destiny since playing mm -hmm. Advanced Warfare. I, I kept did. dying because I was trying to. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why am I dying so much? And I realised it's because I looked at my. I literally had to physically look down at my hand, and I realised I was doing. We're both warlocks, aren't we? Uh, yeah. So who's who's boosting? Of course, we're both apart, warlocks. Apart from the, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the foolish hunters. No, but it, I don't know which one you have. You chosen the phase jump or the one where you kind of still I, I quite can't, slowly. Uh, personally, Dan, I teleport. <laughs> You're a teleporter. I'm okay. a teleport kind of man. I'm a blink. Um, I like that. I like so. resurrection. You see. So I do that as well, but I, I kind of, kind of mostly, that. mostly I like to I like, teleport. I love, <laughs> I love the fact that I can resurrect, because the best thing about resurrection, and I don't think it's anything that's really been explored in an FPS before, is that you can, you, you can play possum. And it's incredible. Someone will gun you down, you'll have resurrection ready, you let you're them run past run you, away. and you just go, <laughs> resurrect, <laughs> turn around, just cap them in the back. And there's nothing better. Like, one of the best really feelings really in gaming is just playing possum. Because like, they hey, think hey, you're hey, going to hey. go, like, respawn, respawn, respawn. And I never do. I never do it on, um, on the multiplayer because it still counts as you having died. Yes. And so I don't, it doesn't matter to me coming back. Whereas I like, I'm actually quite good at the multiplayer. I say with some pride that last night when I had to got one of the one of the medals for the Iron Banner was get ten kills in a row without trying. Ooh! And I just did it in my first game. That's a bounty, it was isn't like, it? Yeah, that was a bounty. Yeah, was a, I did the bounty first try. I literally got into a game, got ten kills without dying. This is the new rebalanced Iron yeah, Iron Banner, which is like they've actually balanced it properly now. So if you're a high level with good gear, then you do dick on you people. You are better. I can assure you, you do dick on people. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I was just killing people in two headshots. Blam, 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 blam. You hand cannon? Yeah, man. Okay. Hand cannon all the way. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I've got to stop talking about Where were we? <laughs> but no, the thing with, uh, with Advanced Warfare, Warfare is basically um, you you have some of these tools, but it tends to be a bit more gimmicky in the campaign. Like it says, oh, press, you can do this, you mm. can change through these grenades and stuff. But it gives you all these fun toys, right? Mm. But then it puts you within this incredibly rigid Call of Duty format of being like, it's still a cover shooter. It's right. the idea of, and I, I really can't work out what happened. I worry that somebody somewhere said, well, no, it needs to be familiar. And so you have this incredibly weirdly restrictive game of it gives you these fun toys, yeah. but then whenever you start trying to use them, it goes, oh, no, no, you're not allowed over there. Oh, no, no, you jumped too high. You can't be like this bit. Oh, no, you've, you're not as to go around that corner. Oh, hang on, no, you should have been hiding down. Mm. And then you get to yeah. the multiplayer, and suddenly it's this frantic fucking mental thing where everyone's dodging, jumping around. And I really didn't get on with the multiplayer at first. Mm. I kept losing so badly until I realized that actually... It looks on the surface like just another Call of Duty, but it plays so differently. Which is what it needed. Like, oh, it's so, so it, it's really good because yeah. it means you just then get an SMG, mm. and suddenly it's like you are just leaping and hopping around the map like a fucking deranged praying mantis. Oh, this is my whole issue. The, the problem with Call of Duty, but not the problem with Call of Duty. The problem with people who criticise Call of Duty is that Modern Warfare was was a revolution in a, in its own yeah, kind yeah. of way. Like it, it was a phenomenal game. It's a phenomenal multiplayer game. And every subsequent game is kind of built on that template for better mm. or worse, whatever it's done. But people forget that fundamentally, it's an incredibly strong template. 
And because there's a lack of kind of yeah, revolution just, yeah, just yeah, yeah. within that template, like, yeah. yeah, people kind of bitch and moan and go, "Well, it hasn't changed enough." But it's but it's still like but it's still building on something that's fundamentally very very good. Mm-hmm. And what Advanced Warfare does very well is it doesn't tamper too much with everything that makes Call of Duty multiplayer what it is. But it makes it makes a significant change to navigation, right? And making such a big change to navigation within what is essentially a very rigid template. It allows so people to change their tactics. It really allows people to change yeah. their tactics, but still within that very fast-paced, mm. you know, typical Call of Duty yeah. environment. And there's only so much you can do. We had this discussion on our podcast of the week, which was like, how do you reinvent it? And we figured that, like, it's not really the multiplayer that needs to change because it is what it is and that's what makes it Call of Duty. It's like, if you change it. the way that Mario jumps, is it a Mario game anymore? Mm. It's like, where do you go from 3D to 2D, whatever? Mario's jumping and the nature of his jumping is the same thing. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty is the very same thing. If you change the very fundamental nature of the multiplayer, is it Call of Duty right. anymore? If you want to kind of challenge what Call of Duty is, it's really about tackling the campaign, as you say. Because you've got complete carte blanche to change that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All the people that care about Call of Duty care about is the multiplayer and whether that still feels fundamentally Call of Duty. But if you suddenly turn the main game into some deep layered RPG about the, the, the struggles of the First World War or whatever, it doesn't matter because it has so little impact on what the multiplayer side of it plays like. It doesn't matter. The campaign this They're two year, separate entities. The campaign this year was it, well, it wasn't like the worst one. I mean, the black, no, got, by, by, by a long by margin. Far, no. But it was, it was still pretty bad just because it was like, why? It felt like to me the whole game, I felt like I was a, bear with me here, I felt like I was a toddler <laughs> with really rich parents who'd been bought all of these toys but then as soon as you start to play with the toys, or as soon as you start to like do something you weren't supposed like, to no, do, no, no, put that no, stop it, stop yeah. it, yeah. stop it. What are you doing? And it was just like, the problem is there were moments in the game where I actually had these like glimmers where I was mm. like, oh my God, this is why I love Call of Duty games. And then it would be like, boom, you weren't supposed to shoot but that guy can't, just yeah, then. Yeah, but the campaigns are like, always like that. You can only go down, a bit. like it shows you all the stuff, but you can only go down so much of it. And yeah. like, it's so by the nose. Like you're you're just like a fucking cattle on a thing. You're yeah. just like, you have yeah. to go from A to B, A to B, A to B But it's the fact the it's given you all of these like incredibly, like it's like you're suddenly a butterfly and yeah. you can do all this mad <laughs> shit. And then in the constraints of the campaign, it's like, no, but mm-hmm. you, you finally discover you're in a Glass case. Yeah, so it's the it's worst. Like, one of the worst doing? gaming tropes there is is like you're leaving the mission area, go back now or something. It like tries that, to get so. around it in like the most stupid <laughs> ways. Though often it just puts you in this like uh, in like this glue. So it's like you want to move forward and suddenly you just slow right down oh. and you like feel like you're walking through Marmite and it's like why? And it's because it's like I think it's trying to hide the loading um, <laughs> and it does it in a variety of ways, but it's like so obvious. There's one pit right, and this is the thing that drove me mental. Was there's one bit where you have to wait. It's like you have to you have to follow your partner. Classic mm. you Follow your dude until he opens yeah. the door. Yeah, and you but have to simultaneously like, shoot guys. You get upstairs, and, and like I was just waiting up there, going, "Where the fuck is he?" I go downstairs. He's just walking around, looking in like cabinets at like school trophies. I know the exact moment you're thinking like, as well. What the fuck are you doing? It's a very <laughs> strange AI player codependency thing going on there. It was like, well, I'm supposed to follow them. But if I second guess them, they suddenly lose their way. It's like what? It's only in their role as shepherd can they can they really fulfil their like role. It's like they're not going to do their bit unless you're there. So you, really? they're not going to start. So you've looking. got it. So you're literally tethered to them. Yeah, they're clearly kind of looking out in you a can, certain. You can wait, but he takes ages to come upstairs. Yeah. And it's the fact that it's like this guy who's your part. Like, Those trophies are really interesting. Though, to be fair. <laughs> it's like he's like looking at all this stuff. Just you're in a school, and it's like look, yeah, we're in a school, whatever. And he's like fascinated by this. But then there's a bit towards the end of the game, right? Where out of nowhere it just suddenly visually reveals something that is genuinely shocking mm. and it actually if it was done well it could have been a really like quite amazing moment mm. but it, no one says anything <laughs> you're suddenly just <laughs> you're suddenly just running through a room with guns with like past these things that are genuinely quite horrifying oh and god I know exactly what you're talking a, about I don't want to spoil it in case people want to play it's it it's a but, proper horror show but it's like, oh it's my like, god I want to know this is, where, this is where Sledgehammer's kind of roots with Visceral kind of oh, comes really? to the fore like, yeah, it becomes right. a horror show like, seriously yeah, yeah like what what Atlas are actually up to the kind of reveal mm. of what space but no one says anything like, no one said they were like <laughs> oh well and I bet you most people don't even see it right because they're just rushing no you see it you see it because there's quite a lot I know you're talking about most players wouldn't have right, seen yeah, it because yeah. of that and, it, and it's quite bold but yeah it isn't tackled with the with the gravitas it kind of deserves yeah. you're like wow but it's like after after you've seen like about a hundred of these things <laughs> yeah. one of the guys goes huh so this is this was their grand plan after and all and that's that's the and height like, of them what the dealing fuck? with it's it it's the sort of thing where literally as soon as the door opens somebody will go what the fuck <laughs> it's kind of the, no it's, one does it's that it's kind of the equivalent of like Neo coming out of the Matrix and going 
Oh, so that was going on. All right, cool. This is anyway. We should totally sort this out. Chip off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can't say enough that the multiplayer is is really really good. Um, I was skeptical because I, I do wonder, and actually it was kind of funny. And I, I at the start of this thing I wrote for Vice, I said like writing about Call of Duty just feels like the most futile thing in the world because <laughs> people who care about it don't need to read about it because they just like it and. Everyone else has just decided that they just yeah. don't care. Most people that enjoy COD won't be reading Vice in the first place. No, 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 but it's like, it's like I think it's genuinely still an interesting series. I think it's worth saying, though, because I think, as I say, so many people have dismissed it out of hand because of its popularity, and yeah. I, think that's, I think that's deeply unfair. Like, that, that popularity isn't ill-founded. There's a very it was founded on something perfect, perfectly good. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it, and there's a reason. And people are stuck with it because they they just latch onto that form and they they just like what it delivers. The one thing actually, I think they have really mastered this year, and they've been struggling. And one of the reasons I'd like to check it out every year is because I like to see how they're getting on with it. They made a real big mistake in Modern Warfare Two of um, of putting all the mad kill streaks in there because basically it was like it was fun as a one off throwaway, but yeah. in terms of building a franchise, it then meant that they just went so heavy on the gimmicks that killstreaks stopped becoming a part of the game and started becoming these fun toys for players who were yep. amazing. Mm. And ever since that, they've been trying to reel that back and trying to work out how to fix that problem they created. And you know, they did it a bit with Modern Warfare 3, which was kind of like Sledgehammer's first foray into it. And everybody kind of pretty much knows that they probably did most of the multiplayer. Yes. But they did then the score streak thing and the fact that you could have score streaks that when you died, they would keep going. Yeah. Uh, which was a nice way to try and get around that problem. But this time they've really nailed it in the fact that you've got that, and but that it's optional, and also they've really scaled it back. Like, Everything's right. optional. The beauty of the Pick 13 season now, and I only got this when I was actually doing the show and I was chatting to some of the experts. I was like, so what exo perks you? They were like, I don't use exo perks. I was like, what? They're like, well, you save a point. I was like, that's a really good point. So you ditch an exo perk. So what about score streaks? Well, well I have like one score streak. Yeah. So you, you ditch two of the score streaks, you have no exo perks, you have no grenades, mm. but you can have like three attachments for your main weapon. You can have like six you know, base perks that mm. really help your game. And you'll do just as well with those because the exo perks will last you maybe 10 seconds, whereas these things will just completely help I you. I pretty much just yeah. focus on just having the UAVs. I have, but yeah. when, I, when I get my UAV, because you can basically, for each of the perks you can, for the, each of the kill streaks you can, you can buff them up with loads of optional things yes. for more points. Brilliant idea. So instead of my UAV being really cheap, my UAV is really expensive. But it, it, the points transfer between death, which adds another chunk of cost to it. But it means I, I get it. But that's the point. perk you've added to the score streak in the first place. Yeah. That you, so so you, have to, you have to earn more points in order for the points you earn to transfer but it, between deaths. When yes. you get it, it's like it means that it's like costs like 1,200 or something. <laughs> yeah. Loads for you a UAV. Everything on. But then you get this amazing UAV and suddenly it's like everyone's just lit up like Christmas and the whole enemy team. <laughs> oh, when it paints the enemies it and you just see them, them through walls. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it's awesome. It's like does all the trimmings. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's nice. And even the fact that, like, I love the fact that they've actually, you kind of remember that what I used to hate about these games is I used to get frustrated because I was chasing the killstreaks. And when I die, like, one kill shy of a killstreak, I'd be really frustrated right. because I was like, oh, I'm so fucking close to getting that. Uh, because the killstreaks were almost the fun thing you were going for. Whereas now they've just made them, like, they're a bit harder to use, they're a bit more functional, they don't last as long. And they've, but they've also they've just rekindled the fun of just the core game of just running and shooting. Yeah. Means that actually what I like most is, I, th I think that when you call in the best thing, the Paladin, it's like this amazing flying ship with all sorts of shit. Yeah. You don't even have to fucking fly it. You can call it in and just let it and then let other people in your team. Yeah, you, like, you can say it. You, you can say like Paladin requires offensive support, or whatever. So you hold the square button, and even though you haven't earned it yourself, you, get you still get it. a chance to experience. That's it. So it means That's if you're good. shit at the game, you still get to play with some of the toys because when people call in attack choppers yeah. or whatever, you can be the side gunner. Yeah. yeah. But it means also like, I'm not really asked about that stuff. So if I get it, often if I get it in a care you package or whatever, I just call it in and, and then, then just carry on playing and, yeah. and let it's somebody else have a go. It's it's actually like one of these things where I really feel bad for Sledgehammer because, I mean, the, the single player is shit, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but with the multiplayer, they've actually managed to, within very, very constraining and strict boundaries mm -hmm. that they're locked into with what Call of Duty is, mm. they've created something really elegant and yeah. really clever. And uh, barely anyone will know about it because <laughs> because people who like games go, oh, fuck Call of Duty. Yeah. It's a shame. But. It's true. And at the same time, I've also been playing Bayonetta 2 and Shovel Knight, so there you go. There's Bayonetta 2 is, is, is good. Shovel Knight, oh. I keep hearing about. Sell me on Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is a very loving uh, homage to the NES, basically. It feels, the presentation, everything about it is very, very faithful, apart from the flicker, you don't get the flicker, of an NES game. And it is literally about a knight with a spade, 
Awesome. Who has to rescue? Well, I don't know. If it's, it's not is even about it rescue. Really, like punishing because the thing is, I know it, and I don't like that old school. Do you know like, what you like about it? It takes its cues from Dark Souls. Okay. What? And it, in a very, very minor way, and the, the minor way it takes its cues from Dark Souls is when you die, you lose three bags of money. Okay. Which is like a certain percentage of the money you've earned to that point, and those bags of money float around in the area that you died ah, in. So you can then and if you die trees. again before you get to the bags of money, then They're you gone. lose those bags. Those bags of money. It's the soul system. Gotcha. gotcha. Very, so it it does a very good job of taking certain systems from contemporary games, but also amalgamating classic gameplay from a bunch of NES classics. So it's got it's got the the feeling of a, a Castlevania game, and it marries it to like Ducktales. So <laughs> the shovel like spade, you can kind of pogo on enemies' heads. And it's got that feeling to it. It's got that sense of kind of natural organic discovery that you used to get from classic kind of Mario games. Natural organic <laughs> discovery. You sound like a yogurt advert. I know. Organic <laughs> discovery, though, I think it's something that's missing. Probiotic Not Non signposted discovery. <laughs> Just kind of looking and, and, and thinking, well, how can I break a map? Well, let's how call can, it how the stumble I... factor. <laughs> the stumble factor. I like that. I like that. It's, it's, it's like that. And it's. Um, and it's deeply traditional and it's, and it's lovingly traditional, but it does enough. With with modern gaming things, to to make it feel like it's learned lessons from the eight bit era, it doesn't feel as brutal and as punishing as though as those games, but um, it still has the same spirit as, as those. Oh, games. I'll check that out then, because I mean the brutality of them. It's on Steam as well, because there was. I mean, I, it's on 3ds as well. I think so. 3ds. Well, yeah, Nintendo still failing to embrace the incredible cross, -play, cross -buy yeah. thing have have kind of failed in that regard. It's like you get thirty three percent of it. It's, it's only like a seven to eight hour game. So why the hell would you, you have buy it twice? it twice? Yeah, you know, it makes sense with things like Monster Hunter, whatever, Smash Brothers. I'm still yet to get a Wii U. You see, but the even the cross play on PS4, it's like. I wonder how long Sony can keep doing the Vita before they go, oh God, and just abandon ship. But I kind of feel increasingly like I'm going to get a Vita at some point just because oh, I've I mean, got loads Ro of games I, for yeah. it now. Rogue Legacy, Velocity 2X, yes. Spelunky, uh, Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm just getting loads of them on PS Plus as well. So it's like, yeah. I want a PS Vita you just because I've got all those already, games yeah. I've listed yeah. like PS Plus. I think, yeah. I think about maybe apart from Rogue Legacy, but the fact that you can transfer your saves between the two is just yeah. incredible. And Remote Play. Remote Play is fantastic. It's, br it's brilliant as well. Yeah, it's gonna. It's on the cards. <laughs> it's on the cards. <laughs> it's got to happen. I mean, home, they must be pretty cheap now as well. I think they are. I think they are. I've just, I've just bought myself Fancy Life on the 3DS. That's just the level five game, isn't it? The, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Level yeah. five game. Level five, and um... haven't played it. I just saw a uh, girl on Twitter who was playing it, posting screen grabs, and she she was a knight, and she'd named her horse Mister Chubster. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "What is this game? I want." So it. I reviewed it for Gamespot, and I liked it. It's it was I gave it a six in the end, just because it doesn't. So the, the whole the whole breaking my heart before I've even so broken the, whole, the seat on the box. So the whole conceit is right. You can you you have all these different professions, right, or, or lives as you call them, and you can be a paladin or you can be a mercenary or whatever. But you can also be a tailor or a cook or whatever. And so they say that you know that what a cook is just as relevant as a paladin. But each profession has little mini games that you can level the thing. And the fact is, anything that's not combat based the tasks that you have to do to level up are very, very repetitive. And they are essentially the same mini games really throughout them as is well. Is that not quite reflective of those particular professions? I guess it is, but it's well, not though. fun to play, you know? It's like, that might be reflective Tells of life. It a lot about the human way. spirit. Yeah. It doesn't matter what right. you're doing. I mean, it's got, it, of course, it's got that whole level five charm and everything. And, and the, the music is, um, it's, uh, Uematsu, I think. Um, Nobu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, cool. Um, I'll play off the top speak of some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, the was, very, it, was, it but... was a ridiculous impulse buy. I've got to be honest. It was because I was on Amazon and I needed to buy some earplugs for my girlfriend, and they were only an add-on item, so I needed to buy something else. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> so I was so like, I'll just buy it. Shit, I can't just buy this. You know, it's all right. It was an emergency. <laughs> I needed to buy something. <laughs> only, I literally had 10 minutes before the next day delivery ran out. It was like, what am I going to buy? Oh, it's sweet. You know what? It's got the, it's got, like, it's very RPG, you know, Final Fantasy, but you've also got um, sort of Animal Crossing-esque, like, just chatting. That's kind of where I see the appeal. It's like you say, it's, it's a shame that the non-combat elements are... Well, it, it seems by comparison quite right. boring to the combat, 
But it's funny because you said like your your friends are playing this other game where it's like I'm growing a field of carrots, mm. and I like the idea. I think it, I think it might work better if there was more interaction between players. Right, where, I think that's the better to missing. You know, where your role as a chef or whatever was far more vital to how the paladin or so you could play a role in, in fighting together, like you could nourish your team, for example. But in isolation, whatever. that feels like quite. A well, it's just that it's a jack of all trades and a master of none. You know, <laughs> like it's like you, you you can so you can do as many of these jobs you like. You can switch it time and you can actually the more you play the, you know you, you retain certain skills from from past lives or whatever um but it just it does it does similar things to a lot of games but it doesn't do any of them quite as well as those games themselves do you know so jack, of all, jack of all trades is the game is it's well, I'll, I'll, yeah. i guess i'll check it out yeah i've bought it now <laughs> fuck you can it you <laughs> actually you take the wrapping off though so yeah. another six out of ten game <laughs> <laughs> Done it again, Lee's. Hey, don't don't this the six and seven. There's sometimes <laughs> sure. I've had some good six times. Six and seven is still good. So. I've had some good times with six out of ten games. I, yeah, I'm glad that true. End. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, what have I been doing? I've been playing actually uh, weirdly. It's very impolite of us. We didn't ask him. We no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I, I haven't. Usually, if I've played something that's He's really host. relevant, it's his, it's his, it's his <laughs> we can't we can't ask him. It's his right? show. It's his show. It's all right. Okay. Should we ask him now? Okay. Matt, what have you been playing? Well, not a lot. <laughs> I left it to last because if I had something that was really relevant I'd jump in with it but I haven't that way so I'm glad you guys have been playing stuff no I've been playing um, weirdly I've been playing on my iPad a bit it's not that weird is it actually when I say it out loud yeah. everyone's doing it these everyone's days doing yeah, it. I read kids, it's normal I've read i got a book as well the yeah. press. <laughs> getting on that um, <laughs> but yeah basically I because I've never really had an eye thing for a long time when it first came out as a, a series my I thing iPhone didn't run it so I didn't get it and, and everyone was banging on about it years ago but what I got into a bit was I, I decided to just jump into the latest one I'm playing Infinity Blade 3 oh. cool because I'd never yeah. played an Infinity Blade game before and I tell you what um, I think it's good but it's a bloody masterclass in like in like Skinner Box stuff I I've oh, yeah. hadn't noticed quite how much things have advanced on the uh, on the eye because I avoid stuff like Candy Crush Saga I just mm. don't go near it yep. For obvious reasons, but my god, they've got good at tweaking your brain. Like, I mean, I've talked about the way Destiny's able to just like pull yeah. little things, and this 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 element of it is just fucking mental. Yes, it's like microtransactions everywhere. What even in Infinity Blade? Hell yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't play mobile games like that. Loads, all. loads, and I actually, I, to be fair, I was having a lot of fun with it, and I'd spent about six hours playing it, so mm. I did give them a couple of extra quid because I thought, well, I paid like three quid for this. Mm. I thought, you know what, I'll give you like four quid. And then I paid seven quid for that, and I thought that's a good amount. Yeah. But I can't, I'm sure the extra buttons after I paid the money once started to appear in the game, being like, but you can pay money for this as well. It's like, what? what? Fuck off. That's why I just don't get on with it. Actually, you know what I played for the very first time the other day? Hearthstone. I'd yeah. never played it before, and I like how that's very. It's very subtle about it. Um, not pushy. N not at all. Not at all. I expected it to be a lot worse. I, I think that's the issue people have with the, the whole freemium model in the first place is that there's no limit. When, when you pay for a game, usually, you kind of know, like, I've spent my money, and I know what I'm going to get, get yeah. and that's it. And I think that's why there's there's so much resentment, because it's 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 the... I've started, so but when does it finish? Right. Yeah. Does it ever finish? Um, it doesn't satisfy that attrition, like, the need for attrition that a lot of people have. It's like, you know, I know that this is done now, and I've done as much as everybody else. You know, it's like, when, when you ask someone, I've you know, I've finished that game, that yeah. you know that you're on a level pegging with them, like, we can discuss this And it kind of gets around it. it a little bit in uh, in this Infinity Blade 3. The funniest thing, though, is it just jumps in and has all this, and it started off for the first hour, it was, like, quite a lot of story with cutscenes and stuff, and yeah. I was like, I don't fucking know what's going on, like... <laughs> That's mental. It's all in the future and stuff, and there are more. Is it futuristic now? Yeah. What? Was it, I think maybe, I maybe it was always futuristic. It's like a combination between. It is a bit, yeah. It's like the two. It's like medieval and futuristic. It's yeah. like they've got like cyber screens, but also still wear knights' armor and have swords right. and stuff. It's weird, but it is fun. Um, but it's it, they kind of get around the whole because the problem I have with with free to play stuff generally is it's like it, I think it damages the difficulty curve. It's that simple. It's just like you need to have a good control of how difficult the game is at different points. Mm -hmm. And if you give people the opportunity to buy stuff that's better, then that damages the, the how well your curve can potentially be done. Mm -hmm. Dark Souls in another universe could be a free-to-play game. Yeah, I suppose it could. I mean, I think that the game that had the best difficulty. Do you ever want was... to keep your souls? It's 69p. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... that would <laughs> destroy you. <laughs> <wouldn't> it? <laughs> it could. Um, but I, I, it's odd, because it's just like... I mean, I think... 
I still think that it's not the perfect game, but one of the best examples of a perfect difficulty curve is probably Resident Evil 4, just because it was like, <sighs> mm. there were moments where you kind of felt like you'd beaten the game, and you thought, oh, I've made the game too easy. And it's like, no, you nope. haven't. It's just giving you a free ride for a few minutes, making you feel it's powerful. Making, yeah, it's Resident Evil 4's going to kick you down Resident again. Evil 4's got a very odd difficulty curve. I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it as a natural, a natural curve, because the opening of that game... It's still possibly for me the toughest part of oh, the game. Yeah, yeah, when you first when you first mm. encounter the village because it gives you very little instruction about for it as well. just how the system works. It's a really brutal introduction. It just bombards you. It just everyone. bombards you. It's like you you have an endless until there's a this kind of predetermined time limit expires. Mm. You were going to be bombarded by an endless stream of villagers. That was what was so exciting. Yeah. Going. And it was incredible. You were like, well, you were panicking. When, I was fucking climbing ladders, do kicking them down. When is this like, going to ah, end? Jesus. And, and you get the shotgun, like the earliest yeah. you ever get it in a Resident Evil game. And you feel so happy when you like, yeah. I've gone the right way to find a shotgun. Oh my God. You know, and, and, and it's just, it's beautifully conceived. And when you, and it's really funny that even when you go back and play it in hard mode and you move on, mm. It still holds the same challenge it did when you first played it. Yeah. So even if you play through the entirety of it on normal and you go back to hard, you're back to square one. You haven't got the weapons you mm -hmm. had or anything mm -hmm. like that. And you're stuck back in that scenario of being almost utterly helpless and just having to rely entirely on your wits have to you, do it. Have you played any of the Evil Within? Yeah. So Evil Within, I, so I'm not finished it. I'm only up to maybe chapter six or so. I've heard like yeah. extremely mixed things about this. I'm see, no, I'm I'm undecided how I feel about Me it. Like too. I, I love survival horror, I, and the Resident Evil like is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Like up until four, you know, and it's like, it, but it's it's super difficult. I feel like in the early stages, like, and I, well, I'm fine with that. The one just, the one thing I said, I think I reviewed it on the show on Video Game mm. Nation. So basically, yeah, yeah, for yeah. host a show together called Video Game Nation, Challenge TV, 10 a.m. Saturdays. Yeah. You should watch it. <laughs> It's awesome. Um, that was my issue with it, is that it positions itself in one breath as a return to Resident Evil style survival horror ammo conservation. The next minute it veers back into Resident Evil 4, mm. just shoot, you're trapped in a right. room and there's 15 things after you, you've got to use every fucking bit of ammo at your disposal. Basically to. after chapter three you get lots more ammo than you than you did previously because you get the yes. keys to unlock the, the more the, things. The more, yeah, the more yeah. yeah, and all of that stuff. So, but it, it, that was the thing. It struck me as a very conflicted game. It was mm. like Mikami trying to have his cake and eat it, mm. like trying mm. to trying to bring together the best of both worlds. But those two worlds really shouldn't have collided in the first place. Like Resident yeah. Evil, in its original flavor, it was brilliant because of what it was, mm. and Resident Evil Four, as it was, was brilliant. And that They're was because different. and that was because Mikami was trying to reinvent it because by Resi Three it was starting to get a little bit stale. Yeah. So he was like, I'm gonna reinvent mm -hmm. Resident Evil and then almost ironically he's now gone back and tried to fuse the two together and it's it's quite misguided. Well, it like, very... I've never liked horror games that much really I've never really been into them but I love Resi 4 because it's not a horror game it's a tension it's yeah. like it's like a thriller it's action yeah. tension it's, yeah. it's like this. it's not like scary it's just like you sit there going Ah! Yeah. Funny, you the, All the tension is derived by right. What do I do now? What do I do now? How many bullets do I have? How, mu how much time do I have to reload this? Just, it's just not running like away, not knowing. <laughs> what's yeah, yeah. yeah. You and or just like, running in a circle just until you get enough fucking time yeah, to stop yeah. and like yeah, rejig yourself. Putting you in a series of sequence where you feel like under duress and stressed mm. and, and like mm -hmm. out of control mm -hmm. and under equipped and mm -hmm. double chainsaw ladies. That you know those yeah, kinds of moments. Just like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, there's that oh, fucking that lab. Oh, yeah. That lab. Those Ashley, <laughs> get the the four that, that has those things that snuffle. Do you know those things that get up off the lab? Those things, and you have to like get the thermal scope to get yes, the little weak points. They've got sp yeah, because if you shoot them, they grow it back. Because if go, you shoot the weak, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fuck. They, they were honestly jitter, the worst things because you. they just work. They move really yeah. slowly. It's because you have time to line up the shot. But I would be panicking so fucking much that I'd be shaking all. The way. Oh, they were they were awful. Yeah, and and I, and I think the other thing that the evil within. Uh, could benefit from is probably just Capcom production budgets as yes. well. It, it just it it feels like corners have been cut a lot right. of the time. It feels very janky, and it really doesn't take advantage of many many advances made in also, game design yeah, but, since Resi Four. But also, it's like I'm up to chapter six or seven, and I haven't fucking got a clue what's going on. Like I know we never really did, and but I I, I guess like, the point is when you get to the end of the game, you might find out. It's very ambiguous. Oh, and yeah. He's also tried to inject a sort of Silent Hill esque ambiguity yeah. into it that is that it's all kind of is it happening in his mind? Yeah, I know, but he's so fucking bland. I'm just like I don't care. Like I love I, I love Jill Valentine like so much. I love Claire Redfield. I love those guys in like the original Resident Evil. But like this guy, I'm just like. Mm. 
fuck. I don't care about anybody yeah. in that game. That's that's the big that's the biggest It's him. Sidekick guy with glasses, girl who dresses inappropriately for work, and that's, <laughs> and that's it. What? <laughs> Sounds like a sitcom cast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie sidekick for best friend. And hey, like, yes. Chanel is. <laughs> Canned laughter. <sighs> oh, dear. I'm pretty, but I'm crazy. Mm. Who wears high heels to fucking go to a haunted house, honestly? It's not, it's not, no, it's not. Just a good idea. Trainers, come on. Trainers. <laughs> well, this is, this is why Jill was so efficient. She wore flat boots because then zombies couldn't bite her ankles. She wore a mini skirt because that's ease of movement and then a wee jumper. She on knew waist, which so way her bread was cold. buttered. Yeah. Smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've mostly just been playing shit this week. I did play uh, Binding, I mentioned earlier, I've been playing a bit of Binding of Isaac. It's I'd not, love to play it. Ah, so both been played, the... Rebirth. Rebirth, yeah. I've not played the original. I just played Rebirth. I oh, don't really know what the differences are, but it's kind of good. I like it. I can see that it's a sort of game that I will like. Um, I find it a bit annoying because I'm. it's like such a dick uh, <laughs> as a game, but I, I, I get that that's the point. I get that a lot of it is that it's like, it's a dick. Yes. My, my problem with Binding of Isaac is... Most of most of my issues with Binding of Isaac were actually addressed by Rogue Legacy, which was the feeling of progress. That yeah. even though you're playing through a different dungeon, that the things you've performed beforehand are actually actively helping you next time. Whereas Binding of Isaac just constantly sets you back to square one every single time. Yeah. Risk of Rain does the same thing, admittedly, is, and I love Risk of I Rain. I love Risk of Rain, uh, but I think Risk of Rain. I mean, you do. I think it's the same thing. You do keep unlocking things in Binding of Isaac as well like, that can appear. I think. Yes, but in Risk of Rain. I felt like, well, there's two things. I felt Risk of Rain, just mainly because the soundtrack and the art design was really, really Brilliant. lovely. That you just, just, the, just the, the practice of getting better at the game, you felt like the game was rewarding you, but also it was just, it was a really, it's a really cool environment. I love playing Risk of Rain. I still play it a lot. Yeah. I just, it's one of my games now that just, every now and then I just think, I'm just going to play that for That's a actually a game I'm actually praying. I've heard it's coming to Vita and PS4 as well, and I'm praying it does because. As much as I love playing on the PC, I was fine just playing. It's the like console, I know it's not yeah. that good, and there's lots of ways I look at it and go, "This could be loads of better in loads of ways." But yeah. it's like oh, I just adore it. There's something about the atmosphere of the world it creates, and the process that I must have finished it. Like I played it so many times. Whereas the opposite I've is never true. Finished it. I've never finished oh, I've, it. I've completely. You playing on normal? It's really hard on normal. You yeah. bump it down too easy for a bit. Is that? Is that yeah, that's acceptable. Fine. That's acceptable. Yeah, it's really hard on normal. Really hard on normal. There's a sort of like you know game of snobbery. You want to? No, you want to? Is it? Is it all right? It's definitely the sort of game you want to practice on easy until you get good. I play okay. on normal now, but it's like it's really hard. But no, it's just it, something about the world is really pleasant. Whereas obviously the whole point with Binding of Isaac, for those of you who don't know, is it's, it's like deeply unpleasant. It's just deeply yeah. unpleasant. It's all done in a childish way, but it's still really dark. Yeah. And it's the fact that it's the Zelda style thing, and it has loads of walls that look like they're bomb walls, and then you put a bomb there, and it's like nah. No. <laughs> it's like, just sometimes I just think, oh fuck you, it's just yeah. Being a dick. <laughs> and it's no surprise that you know one half of the Super Meat Boy team made this because oh, yeah. it's that same kind of fuck you attitude to the player. <laughs> But that's, that's kind of why I like it I as get well. really into it. And the thing I like most about it, actually, is the fact that in Risk of Rain, all of the upgrades you get are, like, passive, mostly. And they're all obvious things that do obvious things, or they just... Mm. You don't need to worry about it. They might make you slightly faster or do crazy things happen, but it just basically means that you just, towards the end, become this swirling mayhem of yeah. explosions. And on an aesthetic level, everything you get makes him look uglier. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, nothing kind of boosts him up, makes him sexier and more powerful. <laughs> Everything else she's like, baby. It's like, oh, now I've, got a, now I've got a giant growth on my head. Really? Or now I'm, yeah. now I'm being surrounded by a fetus satellite mm. or something like that. It's it, quite dark. Yeah, everything pretty... is grim. There's, there's shit everywhere. Look, but it's, you know, it's, it's cute shit, but there's shit it's everywhere. Shit. And there's fish, you know, one of the bosses is a fish chiller. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's fish not chiller. a fish chiller. Fish chiller. Everything is based on some horrific medical condition or just nice. something. But as you say, delivered in a kind of it's it's very appropriate to the character. You know, he's a he's a this kind of innocent child who's mm. been subjected to this shit Horrible for just shit, yeah. the worst reasons possible. Mm. Like, you know, it's sort of a, a game that's about kind of Freudian stuff and child abuse yeah. and all sort of stuff. Yeah, it's meant to be semi autobiographical. Is it? Yeah, well, apparently so. Wow. Apparently he was, his parents were drug addicts and then they kind of oh were gosh. born again Christians. And a lot of that feeds into the main storyline. Into the, into the, abuse into the, the main storyline yeah. and, the, and the, the abuse, the character he disappears into this basement and what's happening. And even between levels, you're, you're kind of subjected to these images of like Isaac just cowering on the floor being and having and these stuff, dreams yeah. about people making him do terrible I things really and being bullied by kids. I really want to play it, but at the same time, I don't want to play it's it. It's not actually, the thing is, it's not actually at dark. It's yeah. that the way it's done with the 
the tone is just mm. in such a way that it makes you kind of think about it, but it doesn't make you dwell on it. No, right. it's a classic example of when you describe something sounding a lot worse yeah, than what you actually, actually, than right. the actual experience of okay. playing it. One of the things I do like really about it though is the way that when you get the upgrades and when you get the items and stuff, it's all very vague and there's so much stuff that you actually have to work out what a lot of what stuff does. does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of fun when you kind of go, oh, does it do that? Mm. I know, but to make it even more perverse, so there's power-ups that work consistently, but there's cards. Mm -hmm. The cards that you find, their function is random every time you play. Really? Yeah, and some of them will like make you just lose energy or whatever. And when you think about it, the game is only about an hour long. If you actually play from start, it's only about an hour long okay. if you can get to the end. But you can't. But you, got to, <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> Important caveat. Um, you've, got to, you've got to understand like what these cards do. But in that one hour playthrough, and then you go back again, and whatever you think that tarot card did the last time, it doesn't. You're do it still this time. you're still kind of going. Should I press the button with total trepidation because mm. it, it might bless you with something yeah. incredible? At the same time, it might take away. And it's, it's yeah. I've lost most of most of the times I've played it. I've ended up losing eventually and dying because of my own like. Uh, trying to work out what something does <laughs> and it's like you kind of think what does that do and then all of a sudden and it's like whenever you get to a point where you think if I did this now will that be like will that kill me the answer yes. is always yes yeah. like you have like one thing that allows you to like eat a heart that you get rid of a heart to do something uh -huh. and it's like if you've only got one heart and you press that button you just die like that's just dead Whoa. immediately a lot, well a lot of it goes against typical gamer instinct you, you, you go into these things and you go well I've got to this area so it must be doing something to reward me right. more often than not it's not it's either like you have to pay more money than you've feasibly earned in that spell <laughs> to buy it. So there's, I don't know if it's like deliberate, but there's this whole kind of consumerist street to the game where you're like, but I've only Wing got, I've only got three reward. coins and everything's 15 coins. You know, yeah. I can't afford it. You know, there's that. It constantly taunts you with stuff that you can't afford. At one point I had a guy who was like a, <laughs> a demon follower. Because you get little helper characters yeah, like, following like you. Yeah, like the fetus. Who like, who like fire like enemies. And they're often uh -huh. really good. But I had one that just came up and he's just like... He said the description under his name when he appeared and I picked him up and said, he hates you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this little, this, little, this little black demon following you around. And it's like, I thought, on you. I thought to myself, what does he do? Like, yeah. okay, he's he's just, he, just, he doesn't like you. Yeah. I mean, just that one description. <laughs> he hates you. It just comes up. Because you can't, once, if you miss the description on the screen, as far as I know, you can't you go can and read it, it again. again. Like, sometimes you just, no. I don't read it in time and they go, oh, I just don't know what that is. But basically, I realised what he was doing was um, he was picking up heart pieces. And, for himself yeah and it meant that once he got like a couple of heart pieces once he picked up like two or three heart pieces he would then like pop out like a, a better heart piece okay but they're only useful if you've got already got like full health if you don't the black ones yeah the black ones so the black ones are good but it was like I really needed health and it meant every time I was trying to pick up so the sort of thing if you're really good at the game he'd be amazing because it means whenever you're, you, if you've got full health he's, full health, he's adding he's just to basically it, yeah. adding stuff but if you're not having a good time, suddenly He's just it's like, you over. you're just getting fucked over by this permanent <laughs> thing that you can't get rid of. You can't get rid of them at all. No, it's just like he's there now for the rest of that run. Yeah. Like, it's Jeez. thing is like some runs you have, and it is like that classic thing of some runs you have, like you just get some amazing stuff at the start and you just do really well. So, so basically you, you you get runs, so you can't save or anything at any point. You can you save just, and, and continue, but But you do you do an entire run in one sitting. Yeah, if you die, yeah. then that's over. Okay. That's if it. you so quit, you then, then you start can, from the start again. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like pure kind of roguelite thing. Okay. Um, it's it's good fun. I mean, it's just it's been so hyped up to me by so many people. I do kind of think so far, and I haven't played enough to decide, but I do kind of think I prefer Risk of Rain just because Risk of Rain is so cool, uh, so stylish. Yeah, I. Yes, I, I know. I totally agree. I think the I think the worlds. I think the soundtrack, and I just actually think the. Just the, the core mechanic of Risk of Rain is so much more satisfying, especially when you realise there are so many tactical differences between the characters you choose as well. Yeah. Just the way that you play with just that limited move set, those four moves that you have for that character, but the way that the cooldown plays into it and my biggest frustration is that it takes a long time to unlock all the characters. It does. Like, uh, which is annoying. There are some very first strict character, measures. I think the first character is like probably my least favourite as well. The one you get at the start is quite boring. But then, as soon as you start getting more of the other ones, it's I think brilliant. my I think my favorite. I can't remember the name of it. It's the one where if you use this one attack, it reduces the cooldown. It it oh, resets the cowboy. The, the cowboy, cowboy resets yeah. the cooldown on all of your abilities at the same time. It's and it's and it becomes such a such a consideration. You don't really find yourself with other characters paying attention to when an enemy's like right at the end of their level and like when you can just nail that headshot attack because it's going to reset everything else. But it mm. becomes important. But mm. 
You should play Risk of Rain. Yeah. Basically. It, Risk of Rain like is it. very good. It's Why are we looking at your Twitter feed? I'm not looking at my Twitter feed. Matt, this is behind the curtain, uh, Dan. This is how, how we do the questions. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the first question is from Brendan Curran. Hi, Brendan. Who asks, what terrible game do you love the most? Uh, my default answer to this is always 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand. Are you serious? Oh, a terrible game. That's a good game. Is it a good game? Yeah, it's a good game. It's, okay. What game is that is perceived to be terrible by virtue of its title and star? Oh, I see. Do I love the most? It's Fifty Cent Blood in the Sand. Why? Be uh, it's it's um it's actually an incredibly brilliant uh, chain combo score based cover shooter mm -hmm. that I think addresses a problem that I have with with a lot of cover shooters, which is a lack of urgency. Mm -hmm. um, and what Fifty Cent does so well is that it it challenges you by making sure that you maintain that momentum while also maintaining cover. And w while the premise of the game is absolutely preposterous, it's He's like got a, a diamond encrusted skull, right? You know it well. Uh, and also, <laughs> well, I mean, and aside from all that, it also has a swear button, which is brilliant. A you swear just, button. You okay, just press like triangle, and it says like "fuck you, bitch," and it's and it, it, <laughs> any time. It's incredible. Excellent. And I'm trying to remember the name of the guys have developed it but they also developed a um a very good fps for the ps2 called snow something okay. snowblind i think it's snowblind and and there was i think it might be snowblind but they're, they're basically they're, they're defunct now but they were a super underrated developer mm -hmm. i think i've told the story about this before on, on something but basically what happened with them is they got bought out by i think thq mm -hmm. right and before that they were making a squad based uh, like war shooter and then, because they got bought out by THQ as part of a big buyout, yeah. one day they just came to the office and they were just like, oh yeah, you're all making, you're, is it going to be a 50 Cent game now? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so that, and that's, that's how, how it happened. Came and that's how so, it ended up with 50 Cent being like fighting in Iraq? Yeah. So yes, it is, yeah. It's like skull really from... weird. And every boss is a helicopter. But um, <laughs> really every is. boss is, and it's the same helicopter. The, the helicopter doesn't get improved in any way. It's the same helicopter. God. Still, like, I had more fun with that than Ooh. I had with some, like, Anticipated titles. I've, I've, I think I've got more fond feelings overall about like Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand than I do at Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Which is like, don't get me wrong. Like there are moments of Bioshock Infinite which, are, at, at their peak, are far better than anything yeah. in there. But as a whole game, don't get me started on pretty that good. Game. Yeah. Again, tapping into my arcade mentality, like I played Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand about four times through what? because some of the challenges were really difficult. There were certain per level challenges and things like that, and it just taps into what it was to be a game. It's like yes, obviously Fifty Cent was this just absurd caricature mm. and everything about such that game. a cool dude am I right oh yeah he's, he's one cool dude <laughs> I love Fiddy says Fiddy. the three always, white people he's always in the club in hey, uh, you that. know <laughs> uh, yeah he's I mean obviously the reason I started playing it was because I'm such a fan of his music and, and then the rest <laughs> the <laughs> And the, and the rest was just a surprise, you know, it's just a pleasant surprise. I like oh. his music, but I really like his music videos. Yeah, no, it's... It, well, lollipops, eh? I love them. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, um, no, I, I mean, that's it. I think, I think, for me, that's the game that was probably based on its box art and cover star and everything was perceived to be terrible, but was actually, in spite of itself, a very good game. Wow. Aoife. It, 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 was, it was good. Um, my default answer for this is always, speaking of lollipops, lollipop chainsaw. Uh, okay. I quite I quite like that game, and it's I mean just for base reasons really, it's because there's rainbows and sparkles and pretty cheerleaders. It did but, look pretty um, fun. Wow, you're doing a lot for your. Uh, I know, <laughs> right? But timing. that's why it's a guilty pleasure, right? I spent the rest of my life like not living up to gender Sunshine, stereotypes. Sunshine, lollipops, and chainsaws. <laughs> yeah, but like I fuck it. Like I love. I mean, you know, Buffy's one of my favorite shows of all time. Oh like, god, I, I can I see love, entirely how it turns. Do you know what I mean? Like He's I, I clearly just, inspired by Buffy. Right, of course, and like you know the the whole high school che high school cheerleader just being awesome and also like I think like it got a lot of flack when it came out for for being a little bit misogynist just because of like that was James Gunn wasn't it yeah let's not forget now a household name thanks to Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy See? but James Gunn wrote that game and 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 I think it shows you know like yeah. so everyone said oh but you know all the all the boss characters call her a bitch and a slut and whatever but she's really not she's like she's gorgeous and and also they have like all these unlockable costumes from High School of the Dead and everything which yep. is a completely separate thing but um but she's she's the manga awesome. series High School yes. of the Dead yes but she's awesome and she she doesn't fucking take any of it on she's just like yeah she's not even aware of her she's just awesome and like she's really close to her family and 
and then her boyfriend gets decapitated. Does she cast him aside? No, she puts him on a keychain on her hip. Like, she turns him into an accessory. And, like, <laughs> and they actually have a really sweet relationship. They do. They do. They Nick actually, is like, his name. Yes, yes, Nick. They have, like, they have a back and forth, and they, they genuinely care about each other. That sounds nice. And then, like, at the end of the game, like, I don't know if it's spoilers, but, like, he, he uh, gets a new body, and does she give a shit? No, she loves him, so she stays with him, and I think it's a really sweet tale. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's true. I, th I think, yeah, I think that's a game that uh, Suda Suda Fifty One was really lambasted for. Yeah, when it really probably should have been um, Killer is Dead. Oh my God! Don't even get me started on that game. That yeah, was God, I mean, I, I, that was one of the most horrendous things I've ever played. <laughs> thing, I mean, I've got to be honest. I didn't have any problem with the, with the lollipop chainsaw. Yeah. I, thought, no. I thought the marketing of it was quite. Shit. Well, of course, and I but think that that, that is what damned it. Really, like when you actually play it, I I didn't have a problem with it at all. I mean, I can see. I mean, of course, people have have a right to to like you know. I, I know a lot of females in the industry had a problem with it, and guys as well. It's but just like, it's one of those things where I like in part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I like in part women and I like empowered sexy women and like I think that she I was think, supposed to I, yeah, I think you know? I think he hit the balance dead on there yeah. and I well you know I, th I, th I think it's because he did bring in these external influences I yeah. think you know Suda 51 is like oh gaming's punk rock and all this mm -hmm. but I think deep down he's actually not well he <laughs> well, he, he claims that it was kind of I mean, he claims that it was kind of Kawa games that Put pressure on him to add that kind of weird, sexy. Yeah, I don't fucking dating. buy. And I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It for seems a like I don't know. I, I because if you look at um, No More Heroes, there's the whole Sylvia Crystal character right? as well. Yeah. And the whole game is built on the premise Downward of this dog and everything. <laughs> he's, he just, he's just trying to have sex. He's with her. trying That's to have sex like... with Sylvia Crystal, who herself is named after the French actress who played Emmanuel. Yeah. So you know, it's it's all in, in joking and referencing, mm. but most of his games are built around sad men who. Whose motivation is, is solely to fuck women. Which is Killer is Dead all over. I mean, the yeah. whole fucking, like, the mini game and that. And I know you. you yeah, know, I mean, this like, thing is, like, I've sort of, I've, I've like, part of uh, my mm -hmm. uh, stamp on the internet, mm -hmm. really, against my will, <laughs> is, is lots of people hating me because I disliked and, and made a stand against what that mini game it was. It made me uh, so fucking uncomfortable to play. Like, but like, if you all hitch yourself to that particular bandwagon <laughs> for your own motivations, <laughs> that, then well, it's bizarre. I still, I still get people going, oh, it's you. <laughs> <they're coming laughs> hey. <laughs> it's like, guys, come on! Like, the thing is, like, I uh, used to really love uh, Suda Fifty One stuff, and I think that when I was actually stood up against what he did with that like mini Killer game, Killer Seven and stuff, I, 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 I thought, you know, the thing is, there was a time when Grasshopper Manufacturing and punk and stuff. I thought, yeah, fair enough. Mm. And now I looked at that, and I'm like, there's nothing punk about Killer Is Dead. It's it was like, just really sad. It's, yeah, it's like the art style is quite cool. I fucking love the art style. The, the, yeah, there's the level with all the um, cherry blossom trees, and it's really quite pretty with all the bamboo and stuff. It's, it, it, work, it works better as a screenshot than it does in motion right. as well. It's a very Cheaply made and it looks cheap and it feels it cheap and in every lot, sense of like, the word. But it's cheap like well. in the same way, you know, with all of the, in, you know, for those of you in the UK, like with recent stuff with comedian Dapper Laughs comedy character. This idea that it's like he he talked about breaking the boundaries of comedy. It's like no, you're not. You're no, you're just it. being a dick. No. And this the thing is, it's like it just feels in the same way that his comedy just felt a bit regressive. There was just something mm. about the, all of the. The tone of it, it's mm. like this isn't artistic so, anymore. No, it's, it's, not, it's not artistic at all. It's like so, I playing that game. There was a no point whatsoever. I was like, I was made to feel like as a, as a female who also plays games, I just wasn't welcome. I just there was nothing in that game that was for me, and they were very upfront about that. Like you know, it was. Yeah. I, kind of, I kind of played it through expecting there to be some maybe some, some, some sort kind of come up or, or some, some sort. No, yeah, exactly. And nothing. And, and, it, and it never emerged. No. Like, it, it is weird. I do wonder what's going on with with Suda particularly, just because of the fact. That a common uh, argument made against this is whenever like um with with low pop chainsaw mm -hmm. when people said this a lot of people said well yeah but he wasn't really like the main person on it and killer is dead again people are, like kind of a lot of people going well maybe he wasn't it's it's very unclear it's like it's what the way that Suda 51 is. has sort of remained being this brand that gets put on games yeah. but then a lot of the time it's sort of unclear how much, how much of an influence he's actually has. having on it yeah. yeah um and i don't know it's it's i kind of I've lost, since killer is dead i've sort of lost caring i sort mm. of think it was one of those things where i used to happily you know with killer is with Killer Seven and all that stuff, and mm. be like, yeah, he was a fucking no amazing cares. Japanese auteur. One of my favourite stories about Suda Fifty One is that one of his first games was actually in the Fire Pro Wrestling series. I don't know if you know this. Mm. So there's a series of wrestling games called Fire Pro Wrestling that was done by a Japanese publisher called Human. Very kind of detailed wrestling game, and he was brought on to do one of the later ones. And he had a whole there was a whole storyline that you played a wrestler as he kind of climbed through the ranks and did a. But at the, at the end of the game, he kills himself. Jesus. 
That was like the first, that was one of the first games that Suda51 ever did. It was like, I'm going to do a wrestling game. And at the end of the game, like, your character kills themselves. And always, it's a SNES game, like, cuts a black, gunshot. Whoa. And, that, and that's it. And I was like, I love that. And it's like, I, ju I just wish that he'd, he'd kind of, he did continue down that path through a spell with things like Killer7, where it was just loaded with this kind of, like, he would he would have a game that would launch as a, a an exclusive title as it was at the time on the GameCube, mm -hmm. but do something that was just done with such it kind of taps to the Nintendo values of doing something that was very different mm -hmm. and 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 kind of weird, but but also doing something that's like so dark yeah. and, and, and 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 kind of dabbling with themes and also but also in this kind of very crazy kind of artistic mm. um just this this kind of real weird kind of artistic fashion yeah. where you think Oh God! Like, what, what? What? What's the message here? And then maybe you think maybe there isn't a message. Maybe he's so just fucking meta. There is fucking with us. You know, it's just yeah. like that's who he is. Well, so it was that's different. why killers and and, 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 and he has fallen victim to what a lot of uh, film directors do, which is they they fall into the pit of self parody, mm. whereas they get to the point where it's like all the values that they're revered for. They start, start to take themselves too seriously. And, and it's funny that you bring up Dapper Labs, because I think Dapper Labs is a product of Ali G culture, where Ali G was was, was 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 pastiching this whole school of people brought up in like well to do areas who kind of co opt uh working class black American culture and think that they're street tough and they're mm. gangster and all this but the, what what backfired with Ali G is that ultimately ended up those people inspiring. embraced yeah. it right. and, in, in, and inspired it and I think Dapper Laps the age that he is was probably part of that school yeah. of people yeah. who watched that and went oh that's how you make ironic comedy <laughs> but completely missed the ironic aspects of that comedy and just went full tilt with the but that's yeah that's the, the massively audience you then attract part. you know like it's whenever he went on what was it Newsnight with his take me seriously turtleneck <laughs> um, it was just like yeah when I when I started off I didn't know how popular it was going to be or like how you know what people would embrace it like, of course you fucking did come it's on like when I, when I actively you know <laughs> said that, people, went that rape is room. cool I but didn't know how far this was going to go. His own Fuck dad, off. his own dad, like, was oh, yeah, tweeting God, him. Was too ugly right, to rip. Too ugly to rip. Like, come on. Awful. That's, that's unbelievable. That's where yeah, and, and, I, and I think that's all it says. It's like, when the guy's parent is, you know, totally out of character yeah. tweeting things like that, it's mm. like, well, no. Clearly it's not a character. It's clearly not a character. Yeah. But, again, we digress. But that, this right. is this is the trap that I think Pseudo51's fallen into. And it's, it's a shame that when you go from something that... Well, well, it used to be that you you'd boot up a Suda Fifty One game and you'd have no idea what the hell you were going to expect. Yeah, and I think that, that now it's like that just isn't the case. It's just cheap and easy. It's, it's incredibly Killer, trite. Killer's it's just like, it's true, actually. Dead. For it's all like, for all its weirdness, fundamentally, it's it's, it's kind weird of bogged really down by its predictability. But it was, but it was yeah. weirdness in sound bites. It was like you know, oh, this this is a guy who has a tiger erupting from his back, and you'll chase him on a motor, motorbike and stuff. It's very contrived weirdness. It, it took the like boss weirdness, structure like, of No More Heroes, mm -hmm. which was awesome, mm -hmm. uh, but just almost it's almost like he misunderstood himself. I tapped out in No More Heroes actually. That was the point where I was like, I'm done with you, mate. <laughs> when it when it was just the fact that it was like it was like trying to it was trying to make a point about the fact that most video games were just you having to go through repetitive corridors. Oh, he has by yeah. making loads of repetitive corridors. Repetitive corridors. Yeah. yeah, and it's like no. So many games do that. Though. That's I mean, like Blood Dragon did that yeah. as well. They were like, oh, tutorials, the tutorials <laughs> eh? Let's do Let's like do twenty. It. No, of actually, them. we do need to do a tutorial. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, it's like fuck off, Dad. Like I'm sorry, it's like. It's, if you're it's, gonna do it, if you're gonna make a joke about something being then shit, don't fucking then make don't us do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah. No. fine. Pass, pass comment on it, but don't. Yeah. Put us through the ringer in the same way because because well, you're just drawing attention. Well, to yeah, yeah, you're, you're just you're just as culpable yeah. of the games that you're criticising them straight away, and it's yeah. it's a massive misunderstanding. But I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things. I still I still actually have a lot of love for. Now, what's your game? I don't know. I don't know. We've gone so way. <laughs> yeah. What's your guilty game? You don't have one. I don't know what my guilty game is. I don't. I, I've, I'm sure there've been lots of shit games over the years I've really enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure there have because especially like when you know I used to review stuff. Oh, Xen many moons ago, you end up having to play shit games, yeah. and sometimes you just end up like quietly falling in love with them a little mm. bit. I guess my one is it's a roundabout way of him saying he likes right to hell retribution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think my favorite my favorite shit game. Uh, I was one I always sort of have nice things to say about vaguely was probably the Game of Thrones RPG. Oh yeah, you just because I'm really into yeah. the books, um, okay. and I really like them. And the RPG is just such a piece of shit for so many reasons, and yet they will began work on it. Uh, a, before the television show was 
made and being popular. So it meant that they hastily put in a few famous faces before it came out, just so you've got like people you recognise in it. But mostly it was made to be like, and that's why they, they weren't even the major face. It was like mm. the eunuch. <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, it was uh, Cersei Lannister. Was yeah, Cersei right? Lannister. Oh, was Cersei in it? Yeah. Cersei was in it. Um, oh wow! She, there was a conversation in which you could get killed if you acted just too nice. If you were trying to be brave and good, then she'd just say. Take them to dungeons and they'd be like, no. game over. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I liked about it. It did lots of weird things like that. Like every now and then, it would be like, you get this conversation <laughs> wrong and you, yeah, you're dead. Like, because you don't say that to a person like that, they're going to kill you. Um, Game of Thrones, you won or you didn't. It feels like it feels like an old Sierra point and click it wasn't, adventure. It was thing it was it No no no, I'm sure yeah. it wasn't, but that that's what it really reminds me of because obviously LucasArts went the whole whatever you do, you can't die. And Sierra games used to be brutal. I remember playing the original Ledge Suit Larry and you start off in a bathroom. <laughs> if you flush the toilet, you die. What? It floods the it floods the bathroom and you drown to death. <laughs> Yeah. There's a point fun, where you fun, get fun. there's a point where you get tied to a bed, and if you haven't picked up scissors about an hour ago, you can't escape, and that's it. You're stuck for the rest of the game. And I think games, especially now that you can save and you can go back, you know, a well, few minutes before you what you do, yeah. like Game of Thrones. I think they should have those options where suddenly it's just like, do 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 do. Oh, you're dead. Fuck. Start over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it needs that. That'd be awesome. That's good. But it was, I mean, it was, the thing is, like, it was really bad, but it had, like, a real degree of, like, care and love for the source material. It had lots of, like, things where, like, lots of locations that hadn't really been, like, thought about much and things like Mole Town and stuff mm. have been briefly in the TV show now. But Mole Town? Were, like, not fleshed out well in terms of how they were. What's Mole Town? It's, uh, Mole Town is a little place um, mainly filled with prostitutes. Awesome. Um, which is an underground because Lord town. knows Game of Thrones needs more yeah. prostitutes <laughs> it's actually I've always quite, thought that about it it's basically it's <laughs> one of the more. most northern places that's still around in the main right. area it, because basically the so men, it's, the it's, men it's on the wall it's a Newcastle of Game of Thrones the Night's Watch <laughs> that's mean just I know, more I'm Craster's joking. Keep basically yeah <laughs> no, the Night's Watch no Craster's Keep is above the wall oh I see I'm yeah. getting into serious deep stuff but it's basically it's the fact that it's, they're, they're not allowed to have wives in the Night's Watch they're not allowed to like sleep with yes. anyone they're supposed to so be celibate, but anyway. lots of them are anyway, mm. but they sneak out at night, and it means it's quite close to the wall, to the main castle, and they sneak out, and mm. it's basically just an what underground a good idea for brothel. a business. But that's what I love about Game of Thrones, is that it always remembers that there's a humanity beneath this, and in, a many, in many fans... Mostly <laughs> represented by shagging. Yeah, well, well it let's is. be honest. And let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right, but, that, but that's it. It's like, if you're going to have a bunch of men together in a place, and in a lot, in a lot of fantasy it, yeah. scenarios, it'd be like... These guys are celibate, da, 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 and they all and they're all be like upstanding men who Damn just it. wouldn't do it. They'd yeah. never even dream of it. They'd be upstanding fucking constantly. They'd be, they'd be monks off. with they'd be monks <laughs> with fucking swords. Uh, but then Game of Thrones is like, I know they all have their urges. <laughs> No, I, mean, I mean, what you know, in one in one way, it could be they all go to Mole Town, like, <laughs> and in the other way, it could just be well, more like prison. Such an unsexy could, name as well. Could. If you had a a brothel based town you I think it's called Mole Town because it's quite cold up there and so to stay warm that mostly it was like underground because oh. it's like really because really no, all the prostitutes are very poor yeah, that's what I thought like you know syphilis more like just popping up all over the place oh, oh. I didn't even think of it <laughs> like that <laughs> but yeah it's, it's one of those weird games I, I can't recommend it but I had some really good times with it just because I, I did end up I, it was a good game in the fact that when I finished it I did actually like after I finished reviewing it I did go back and try and get some of the multiple endings and stuff just because I, I wanted to see how it panned out and I think it was something that RPS wrote about it um, and it's completely spot on was that one of the lines in what they wrote about it was saying like it's as if about a third of the way through the game the voice actors suddenly realise that the script is actually quite good and so <laughs> at the start of the game they're going through the motions just terrible. and then they're just like, like oh it's so bad for the first hour or two and then it gets to a point where it's like the plot actually starts to become really good and then you actually get towards the end of the game you get some really so good like, deliveries because <laughs> I, I bet you and, and this is from personal experience like when they're looking at the page it's the first time they've read this yeah story. no problem yeah. and they're getting through good Oh, oh, oh. Right. oh, right, okay. I can't tell like... if either they were halfway through the process of recording it when the television series suddenly exploded and they thought, this oh, is my chance. Yeah. Or if maybe they just sort of were playing, and, you know, going through it and thought, actually, this is all right. Because mm. like, it has some really interesting, nuanced things and it does a really smart thing in the fact that you have the two main characters and you, there's that class thing of you play a bit as that character, and play a bit as that character. One, yeah. And then obviously at some point the characters meet. But then you start to, as the game goes on, you start to realise more about the characters they've known each other for a while but then you start to learn more about their relationship before and you start to learn about their histories and you start to learn about 
the things that happened before they both went off their separate ways. And you start to slowly oh, wow. put in the pieces about what happened so back then. Yeah. And yeah. then you realize that actually what happened back then was actually really fucking bad. And when the realization comes in of, of what happened and you suddenly go, Oh, and you sort of you is see this like Peep Show, the bad thing. Oh, mega it's, tsunami! No, is, is, is it like, is it like that? Of, so. Oh, it's like watching two <laughs> two like ships crashing into each other in slow motion. The fact that it's just like you kind of start to work out what happened, and you sort of realise that like you, you look at all of the different ways that the story can end in terms of like the current situation and how things are going to pan it's out. Just and it's like this is going to be bad. And like, it's worst case scenario. And it's Game of Thrones. And it does it's have that. It's always worst case. Case. You, do have that, you do have that element of the fact that you're only really going to have like endings which are going to satisfy some one of the characters and not the other. And so it ends up being like, rather than being like, do you want the good ending or do you want the bad ending? It's like, do you want the ending for this person? Kind of makes you person? choose between the two main characters. Mm. Like, who who do you want Ooh. to be? And I think that's fascinating. Choosing you know? your favorite yeah. child. It's a really interesting idea. I go to the toilet. Yeah, well, anyway, I think on that note, <laughs> we'll wrap it up. And then you can definitely Yay! use the toilet as much as you want. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Dan's gone to the toilet. <laughs> He's literally... I just really like, need the toilet. It's fine. it's fine, don't worry about it. I saw someone on Twitter asking about... I think they called it Talk You a Message or something like that. That was brilliant. That was brilliant, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's why we cancelled it, because nobody could remember the name. <laughs> Hot zings. And uh, thank you, as ever, Eva. Go, go for a bit. <laughs> so I just find it hilarious that he's just gone up and left. It's fine. I do that a lot, actually, when it's okay. not my podcast. I just go, you end it, you end it. I was like, I'm holding on to my bladder. Don't we in the oh, living he's room. back again. Oh, he's he's somewhere. Right, okay. I'm pressing the button. Thank okay. you very much for listening. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye.